the challenge that we face as a state is how do we make this the guiding ethos of the entire California education system. And uh, the folks on, on this panel are responsible for solving that problem, so I thought they'd be the perfect people to talk to about this. Um, and I think you know, I'm going to give each of them uh, eight or ten minutes just to, to talk about what they are doing and what their organizations are doing uh, to, to bring this learning system into existence, and then I'll have a few questions for them, and then we'll open it up for questions from the audience. Um, and I think, uh, I guess that size is probably the uh, appropriate criterion for uh, how we proceed. So we'll go from smallest to largest. And I'll ask Carl Cohn, who runs the smallest organization, probably, probably the smallest organization in California's education system, uh, to, uh, but who has the biggest responsibility for bringing this, this change about, uh, to talk about what CCEE is doing, and, and particular, with a particular focus, Carl, on, on how we're creating a system. Sure. So this will be eight to 10 minutes of spouting heresy. It's Father's Day, it's Sunday in Long Beach, and I pick up my local hometown newspaper, and I'm expecting some heartwarming story uh, about fathers. And the front page above the full story is picked up from Cal Matters, is California's investment in needy students paying off few signs indicate achievement gap is closing. And I thought, wow, it's Father's Day. And basically, your hometown newspaper is telling you you guys aren't really doing it. So I thought about back to my days as superintendent in Long Beach. In the 1995-96 school year, Dick Riley, Janet Reno, and President Clinton came to Long Beach to praise our efforts, efforts that had very little to do with closing the achievement gap. And part of the work is focusing on basically raising standards in a wide variety of fronts, standards that can actually rescue youngsters. One of the most moving parts of President Clinton's speech that day, and he did a round table with everybody, including students, before he went out to present to the large audience, he engaged a student, a middle school student named Maurice Troutman. And Maurice talked about how changing the culture of his neighborhood by wearing school uniforms sent a powerful message that he deserved safe passage as a youngster in his community. So fast forward to this year. We're out in Blythe, one of the first pilot districts that we're working with. And one of the things that we do, we get to know the local community that we're serving. And so we went, the economy in Blythe is driven by two state prisons, Ironwood and Chuckawalla Valley, where the LA Times reports that we're now spending $75,000 per inmate per year. And we're there in a classroom. They have a contract with the California Community College System to translate textbooks into Braille. It's one of the most popular occupational areas in the prison. And the leader of that is a young inmate who talks about his schooling experience growing up in South Central, no father in the home. And absolutely had no safe passage to school and had to figure out how he was going to get to and from school. And the only way he could do that was by joining a gang. And he decided, 
because he's a pretty smart young man, and you can actually see him on YouTube, TED Talks, at Ironwood State Prison. He decided, if I'm going to be in a gang, I'm going to be the leader of the gang. And so later on, we're walking with the warden, and I asked the warden, what did he do? The warden said he killed a whole bunch of people. And he'll be here another 15 years or so, but he will get out. When you think about the amount of money that we are willing to spend and the types of interventions that are needed, some of which may not necessarily involve closing the achievement gap. The achievement gap depends on a lot of things. Wednesday night, I was in Chicago at a function and ran into a good friend, Paul Gorin. Paul is the superintendent of the Evanston, Illinois School District. I don't know if you all know the latest research from Stanford, but Northwestern University is in Evanston. The highest achievement gaps in the country are at Berkeley, Evanston, Illinois, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So if university professors decide to enrich their children's education, gap's not going to close that fast or that quickly. So I always argue that the most important thing is to put the right supports in place. So you have all these iconic democratic leaders coming to Long Beach in the 90s celebrating what we were accomplishing. We never talked about closing the achievement gap. What actually happened, though, after we put the proper supports in place, years 5 through 10, the gap closed. And it closed in a big way that led to our winning the Broad Prize for Excellence in Urban Education. So I would just issue a caution about this whole notion of making wild promises, if the only measure is closing the gap in the short run, we're probably going to come up short. Um, a year ago, the state gave us $30 million for training and to work with some pilot districts. Thousands of you have been at our trainings. You've heard about our professional learning networks. All of that is going forward. What I'm really impressed with, and, and obviously the Cal Matters story created some cognitive dissonance. I see good things happening. I see people coming together. I see adult learners who work with kids learning from each other. I see great examples in all the places that we're working with that people really appreciate this new approach. The legislature and Governor Brown's historic legislation memorialized us as this agency that was going to get the right kind of help and assistance to those folks at the local level. Part and parcel of that is the understanding that there was the wrong kind of help and assistance. And we had the wrong kind for a decade and a half. And I'm arguing that we need time to get the right kind in place, and over time, it's, it's going to show results. When I'm in Dos Palos or Aloma or Greenfield, which a few years ago um, was being taken over by the state, I see extraordinary progress. Uh, Anaheim Union High School District, the parent learning walks there are the best example of the stakeholder engagement that was called for in LCFF LCAP. 
you know, union high school districts often have a culture of we only tolerate parents when it comes to sports and extracurricular. But Anaheim Union, along with its teachers union, has created parent learning walks because the types of changes that are taking place in our classroom, parents need to understand those changes if they're going to be our partners and reinforce that learning. Um, Victor Valley, I was out there giving a keynote speech at their management retreat last week, and here's a high school principal talking about how difficult it is to motivate high school teachers to change their practice, and can we help with that? Yes, we can help with that. Over the next few months, we're going to have to answer some questions about our work what kind of impact are we having and how do we measure it? And then how do we go about scaling up the pilot work and where do we get the resources to support that? So we've got a big challenge um, in front of us, but in terms of this final encore career of mine, I can't think of a better assignment than being actually out there in the field working with these districts to bring this new religion to them. So thank you.